Yes. Perfect. Okay, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, as already uh, introduced, I'm going to present the paper Robots, AI and Immigration, a race for scarce talent or of displaced workers, which is joint work with Ivan Giesing and forms part of the EU Horizon 2020 uh, Pillars project. And um, before going into the details, what uh, the paper asks exactly, I would like to present to you three key facts which motivate the paper. So first of all, we as humans continue to replace certain tasks by automation. So for example, here you can see the operational stock of robots over time uh, globally. Um, and there has been an increase of 85% of the operational stock of robots uh, between 2014 and 2019. And in the below graph, you can see the number of AI patent families and scientific publications related to AI over time. And the number has actually increased by five times and 12 times respectively. And when we then uh, divide this by different regions, so here in this case, China, the US and Europe, we can see that China has actually uh, increased uh, the number of installed robots, but also um, the number of AI patents uh, by a lot during the last years. And that therefore one or many talk about a global race uh, with respect to automation. And lastly, at the same time, these developments bring along some skill mismatches related to the Industry 4.0 transformation. And some have reported that there is a scarcity in AI talent or a dearth of AI talent, especially in Europe. And this is also reflected based on data that shows that Germany, for example, spent on average six months hunting to fill tech, tech positions. And that's bringing all these facts together is why in the paper we asked the question of how automation affects immigration flows and also the labor market outcome of migrants versus natives. So labor market outcomes meaning unemployment and wages. And we focus on Germany as it is one of the main automated countries in Europe and also uh, one of the main migrant receiving countries in Europe. And more concretely speaking, we measure automation via industrial robots as we see it as manual automation and differentiate it from AI, artificial intelligence, as we see this mainly as mental automation. So the automation of mental tasks. And how we do this is uh, using different data sets. So we use online job vacancy data on skill demands. We use IFR data on robotics and matched employer employee data from Germany. And we apply a shift share instrument approximating the robot installation in Germany by the robot installation in Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. I will explain to you later why exactly these three countries. And in the case of AI, we used Switzerland as we only have the honor job vacancy data for 10 European countries and not for Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. So here we had to choose another country. And our main finding is that uh, robots decrease the wage of migrants across all skill groups uh, while not having any significant impact on the native population or immigration flows. And AI increases the wage gap as well as the unemployment gap of migrants and na the native population. And also significantly impacts the inflow of immigrants. Before um, entering a bit more the paper, uh, let's have a look at the literature and uh, of course there is a big literature out there on technological change and the labor market effects and depending on the type of technology one looks at um, the results differ and also depending on the country context the period under consideration and so on but yeah the overall consensus is that technological change is still biased and has productivity and complementarity effects for some 
bus displacement effects for others. And this depends a bit depending on the context. So based on this, our, our hypothesis would be that there actually is um, so th there could be two things happening. One would be a race for talent and the other one would be a race of displaced workers. Um, in the case of the race for talent, we would assume we would expect to see an increased uh, immigrant inflow to those labor markets with a high demand for AI related skills. And we would expect to see wage increases uh, in labor markets with a high demand for AI related skills as well as potential immigrant inflows. Sorry, there's a mistake on the slide. And in the, in the um, case of um, a race of displaced workers, we would assume to see displacement effects, wage decreases, and migrants being more affected as they could have less access to local networks and labor market institutions. So these are the two scenarios one could uh, expect. And now looking a bit closer at the literature on immigration and technological change. So they are also, again, depending on the type of technology one considers is already, of course, uh, some literature out there. So for example, there's one paper by Basso et al who looks at uh, computerization and immigration. And another one by Hansen looking at artificial intelligence and immigration. And of course, also a bunch of literature looking at immigration in the field of innovation and technological change. And our contribution is that we somehow look at it the other way around. So we look at how automation impacts immigration and the migrants labor market outcomes, as well as we distinguish between two different forms of technological change and compare them to each other, which would be the robots and artificial intelligence. So as already mentioned, we use different data sets now in now a bit more detailed. The first data set is on the labor markets and immigration. And here we use the German matched employer employee data uh, called ZIAP. And the ZIAP is a 2% sample of the entire German social security data um, and follows them over time. And is in a spell format originally. So every time there is a change in the employment history of an employee, it is registered in the ZIAP. And we take advantage of this data and um, transform it in panel data and use data from 2005 to 2019. And then combine this with the data um, on technological change, with which would be um, on the one hand, the IFR data on industrial robots, which originally is at the industry level, at the NACE2 classification and at the country level. So this is uh, the limitation of this data. It's only available at the country level, not at the subnational level. And um, this is why we apply a shift share instrument, which I will show you also later in more detail. And here again, we, um, we restrict the analysis to, to the period 2005 to 2018. And um, for, the, for AI, we re rely on burning glass online job vacancy data. And uh, this is data mirroring the, the online job vacancies in Germany. And it has 58 million entries. And we use the period 2014 to 2019. And the original data is at the ESCO level. So you can observe ESCO skills, ESCO occupations at, at the four digit level and industry codes. And we have the data for 10 European countries and therefore also have to instrument it with another um, European country, which is of course the limitation, but yeah, uh, the data does not exist or and we do not have access for the period 2014 to, to 2019 for non-European countries. And Sorry, uh, Brita, may I ask you just, uh, oh, the data that you have for online job vacancy, is it at the county level? Like when they post a job, is it also posted like where exactly would you work or is correct. it also national? Okay, nice. Correct, so this is, um, I think you can even go down to the city Okay. Um, we go down to NUTS 3 because of the German social security data. It would be too much to go to, down to the city level because it's 2 million observations. Um, but yet, theoretically, you could go down to the city. 
aspects. And um, how exactly do we take advantage of this data? So in the case of AI, we take the share of jet job ads mentioning keywords from Asim Muglu et al. So there's one paper by Asim Muglu et al. on the effect of AI on labor market outcomes in the US. And they also use the burning glass data and predefine some keywords. And as, as soon as one of these keywords um, appears in one job ad, then this is a, a job ad requiring AI skills. And we then do not only rely on, on keywords by Asim Muglu et al, but also draw from Chiarello et al, because it's a bit more complete and has also some newer terms. And then through this uh, measure, the, the demand for, for AI. And uh, in the case of robots, we just take the difference in the operational stock of in, in industrial robots um, at the industry level. So why Germany? So Germany is an, int uh, an interesting case study in this case because it is the main robot adopter in, in, in Europe. So here in this graph, you can see robots per 1000 employees over time. And uh, Germany is yeah, outperforming the other countries in, the, in that sense and has been doing so uh, for a long time. And when looking at AI, um, so here on the left, you can see on the top, the number of AI related patent applications over time. And here Germany is um, yeah, also leading. And, and then on the bottom, you have the share of job ads requesting at least one AI related skill. And here Germany is not leading, but among the three main countries with the highest demand. It is important to mention here that, yeah, the, the demand is still very low. So it's um, only 0.4% to 0.6% requesting uh, these, these skills. So it's still not very significant. And also in addition to that, Germany is one of the main migrant receivers. So here you can see the absolute immigrant inflow over time per 1000 people. And here Germany has outperformed the US actually in 2012. And that's why uh, Germany is interesting. And now looking at it in a bit more detail, some descriptive hints. So here you can see on the left, uh, migrants by skill group. So you can see that uh, there is an increase in the medium, um, low and high skilled migrant population to Germany. And on the, on the right side, you can see the inflow by sectors and the inflow is actually highest for the ICT, ICT sector and also for the business, business services sector. Okay, now entering the details of the empirical uh, strategy. So first of all, um, as already mentioned, we are having, we are applying an instrumental variable strategy with the shift chair instrument because there might be an endogeneity problem as labor markets with high exposure to robots might also differ syst uh, systematically from unobservable variables uh, impacting the immigrant inflows or labor market outcomes of migrants and natives. And that's why we then instrument um, robot adoption by leading non-European countries, South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. And in the case of AI, uh, as already mentioned by Switzerland. And then we look at changes over time. So in the case of robots, we look at changes from 2005 to 2018. And in the case of AI, we look at short term changes because yeah, we don't have the, the data doesn't exist before 2014 or we don't, we don't have it. And we conduct our analysis at the NUTS3 level. So we take always the differences and then uh, have the NUTS3 level as as the level of as the unit of analysis. And this here shows um, that there is quite some variation in the robot exposure and immigrant inflow at the NUTS3 level. So the left graph is the robot exposure at the NUTS3 level, and the right graph is the immigrant inflow. So the immigrant inflow you can observe directly from the ZEAP data. This would be the cumulative immigrant inflow over time of the 2% sample, right? 
And on the left, this is the robot exposure proxied via the shift chair instrument. So it, it relies on the on the employment structure on the NUTS3 level. I have a small question about this. Yeah. So this is basically this kind of the Ashimoglu paper approach where you basically have the IFR data at the industry level, then you look at the industry composition in a certain region, and then basically you can define an exposure over this longer period of time, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, uh, how many NUTS3 uh, regions are there in, in Germany? Um, 403. And are you, exp uh, are you exploding also the sectorial uh, dimension? So your cell is just location or is it location by sector? Um, it's only location because locations by sector would be too much for the ZIA because we have the 2% sample and then migrants are 10% of the population in Germany more or less. So this, then we would run into a small sample problem. I see. Um, yeah, that's why NATS3 is somehow the best we can do with the data we have at least. Yeah. Yeah, and same here for the for AI, you can also observe quite some variation. So this is only measured via the online job vacancies related to your question, Maria. So this is at the NUTS3 level, uh, measuring uh, the skill demand in all skill demand at the NUTS3 level. So as I already said, we use this shift share instrument. So I hope you were already asking about it here. It's, uh, it's explained. So um, how we do this is to take the share of employees in an industry and region, and then multiply this by the difference in robotics at the industry level. And through this proxy, then the robot exposure at, uh, at the regional level, in this case, county level. And then we run um, this regression you can see here where the outcome variable is always the difference of our variable of interest. So for example, the cumulative immigrant inflow or the change in migrant share in the overall ZIA population or the percentage change in, in for example, wages. And uh, on the right hand side, you can see then um, that the main explanatory variable would be the robot exposure and we control for trade and um, ICT, ICT meaning um, the, the, the um, information and communication technology uh, adoption as these might be confounding. And we also have a bunch of control variables using for uh, always the variable from, from 2004. So somehow measuring the initial labor market, how it was looking. And here we use, for example, the share of women or the share of middle skills among some other control variables. And then we use the instrument and to motivate a bit more why these three countries, I'm showing you here that South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan outperformed Germany uh, since 2010, especially South Korea. And we are combining these three countries so that uh, this is not confounded by, for example, country-specific country shocks, you know? So it's, it's a bit better to combine these uh, three countries. Um, and then take this as the instrument. And here you can then see the first stage. So this is at the industry level. And um, yeah, here you can see a positive um, association and the F statistic um, is above 10. So that's good. And in the case of AI, we have to do it differently. As already mentioned, we use uh, Switzerland, but also we are using um, here the occupations. Um, and um, yeah, we, we instrument this then by the occupation share uh, requiring these skills in Switzerland. And then do the, the analysis at the county year level, not, not anymore at the differences. Uh, to check to check um, so this is more a story on the short term the, the other thing is more on the long term and this is more the story on the short term and um, the outcome variable is then the immigration demand uh, as well as labor market outcomes of migrants versus non-migrants so it's the same outcome variables as before and 
we apply also the same shift chair instrument, but now for AI, and then run uh, the regression similar to what I've shown you before. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the details, but um, I think it's clear. And here I show you the AI skill demand in Switzerland versus Germany. And we use Switzerland as, yeah, it's also outperforming Germany. And yeah, I mean, it's also not a perfect instrument, <laughs> that's uh, for sure. So it would have been nicer to have a non-EU country, but um, at least Switzerland is somehow not as related as the other European countries. So it's, yeah, it's not perfect, but the best we can do. And um, here again, you can see the first stage. Uh, so again, it's positive and, um, and the F statistic is um, above 10. Um, sorry, Brita, before you continue, may I just ask you, um, again, coming back to the AI, you have information at the county level, but do you actually use it or do you use just the national information like the the one of robots, let's say, exposure. So we use it for the OLS, but not for the instrument. Um, I don't okay. know how one could do it. So yeah. in the in the OLS, you you use the actual um, the actual county level data, and yeah. then your IV is the shift share plus the instrumented yeah. uh, shift. Let's say. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And if I yeah. also yes. uh, ask a question. So in terms of the skills, how much details do you have? Because I think when you're looking at the impact of robots, it's fairly clear in the literature that it will increase the demand for high skills and decrease possibly the demand for these middle skills. But then when I'm thinking of AI, it may, it may be a little bit more complex in the sense that it might increase the demand for computer scientists, for instance, but it might actually replace uh, or have this displacement effect for some other very high skilled jobs. So I wonder whether you're able with your data to distinguish a bit more finely uh, the skill level. Mm, yeah, one could maybe look at certain, I mean, this maybe like a heterogeneity analysis, you mean, or? Yeah, because you, when you're looking at wages, you may have very contrasting effect where the wages of engineers are going up, but then the wages of lawyers, for instance, are going down or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't, I'm always worried with our 2% sample of the ZF <laughs> that we get a, a small sample problem. But yeah, um, so what, what we always do now, I will show you now in the results, we always distinguish between high, medium and low skill, but it's of course uh, quite aggregated. Yes, I agree with you. So it would be nice to somehow look at certain occupations and standing on them on their own and so on. Um, but yeah, I, I will check if I can do it with the data. It's, it's always a, a sample problem, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So now getting into the data, and this is still a, a bit like still preliminary. So um, yeah, um, the first thing we, we see, so taking the change in, in, in immigrant inflow, so the cumulative immigrant inflow as an outcome variable. And here I always show like the overall effect and then the high skilled, medium skilled and low skilled. And you can see then always the OLS and the IV next to each other. Um, so the first thing we see is that this has no significant, significant effects on the immigrant inflows, robotics. So this is now robotics. Um, so yeah, apparently robots do not play any role in, in immigrant inflows. Um, but they have effects on the wages. So here you can see the percent change in, in wages for the period 2005 to 2018 and the impact of, of robots. And um, what we do is to create an interaction term where the variable with, with where the variable migrant is a dummy variable, and then you have the robot exposure to see if the effect somehow differs uh, for, for migrants, right, uh, from natives. And what you can see is that robot exposure leads to a wage increase for the middle-skilled um, 
natives, um, but it decreases the weight of migrants across all scale groups. So this could mean that that's only one possible interpretation and we need to create more evidence of, uh, to confirm this, that somehow uh, migrants suffer more from, from technological change, in this case robots, because maybe they have less access to uh, local networks, maybe they have less access to relevant information on, on, um, on technological change and the need to adapt their skill set. Or maybe they, they are less protected by local labor market institutions. This is just some, some possible explanations for this. And in the case of um, the unemployment rate, there are again no significant impacts when looking at the IV results. When looking at the OLS results, yes, but um, the IV results, no. And this means that there are no direct displacement effects. It is important to have in mind that uh, robots actually, robot adapt adoption actually mainly happens in the manufacturing sector, right? So this is shown here in this graph. Um, the overwhelming share of, of robots take place in the manufacturing sector. So this is why we then look at the manufacturing sector uh, separately. And we also look at, um, at the number of employed over time. So what you can see here is the effect of robots on the, uh, on the percent change in the number of employed by sector. So we distinguish between manufacturing service and service sectors and all other sectors. And we find a negative impact on um, the number of on the number of employed in the manufacturing sector for migrants, right? So this could mean that okay, there are no uh, direct effects on the unemployment rate, but maybe they are moving somewhere else. And given that we also find a decrease in the migrant share in the manufacturing sector, I'm not showing you this here, but it's in the paper. This could mean that yeah, they are somehow maybe leaving even Germany as a, as a response. And um, when looking at AI, we see that it uh, impacts the immigrant inflow positively. So here you see, um, again, by skill group, the impact of AI on the cumulative immigrant uh, inflow. And we find significant effects for the medium skilled and the low skilled, but not the high skilled, which is very surprising. I would, as I said in the beginning, when you remember our, our slide on the hypothesis, um, we were outlining, okay, in the case of, um, of um, skill shortages in AI, we would actually expect to see um, an increase in the, in the high skills, um, but that's not what we find in the data. Um, and sorry, Rita, just uh, returning to the previous results, are you looking at uh, raw numbers of inflows like immigrants or is that normalized by the country population? So this is like the ZIAP um, population, right? So always this 2% um, this, this, uh, sample, but it's not normalized, no. Okay, so these are raw, raw numbers. Let's see. Yeah. The actual inflows. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it's not like the full, so it's not the full population, it's like the 2% sample, but yes, not, uh, sure. not yeah. Sorry, just out of curiosity, because after all, you are exploding variation at the location level also. So the variation is across the areas. And uh, you showed that in the case of uh, uh, robot adoption, most of the variation is uh, concentrated in one sector in manufacturing. So then you have the variation across uh, areas. But what about AI uh, penetration? Is, is there also some you know, clustering in one precise sector or, or not? Do you have anything yes. on that? Um, yeah, we have it. Like I show you later, like in a bit, I show this to you. Um, we also do the same. We, we distinguish between the most and le less exposed sectors. And then, yeah, also look at the differences. Mm, okay, so then um, we see then again like a productivity effect for the natives and um, 
a decrease in the migrant daily, uh, migrants daily wage. So this is uh, also similar to the robots. And I mean, the, the reasons could be similar to what I mentioned before. And also in the case of unemployment, uh, here we see differently from robots that it actually increases the unemployment of the migrants. So this could speak for displacement effects on migrants, but this is not the case for the natives. So again, there seem to be some adverse uh, effects. Sorry, could you just go back to the previous slide? So this one, in the previous one, you were looking at wages, right? Yeah. And what are you accumulating the wages of all of the workers? So what, what, how, what is it? So is that the year yearly salary? What is the unit of your outcome? Um, so this would be again the percent change in, in the wages over time over the entire time period. But yeah, you're right. It's because I mean I see very huge numbers. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how to interpret these coefficients. Yeah, I need to I need to maybe check this again. You're right. It's, it seems to be too too big. Yeah, I mean, it depends what is the unit. If it's annual income, but still it, it looks uh, looks a, li a little bit big. It looks like you're accumulating over individuals or something. Yeah, normally how we do it is that we look at the percent change at the next three level, right? But that would be too, I mean, this would be immense numbers. So that, so I, I need to check this again, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, sorry. Just on the sense, so you have the um, the AI exposure is varying at the location level, and your outcome variable is the average wage among all in among that location, them. and then among, uh, among the, skill groups, right? Yeah, among skill groups uh, and among migrants and natives, right? So, so the data is always like for migrants and natives and the different skill groups. But then you, you said you have a dummy for migrant, right? So I don't understand yes. the, the, the outcome is aggregate, right? It's an, it's, a, it's an average, right? Yes. It's not at the individual level. No, not at the individual level. But so, um, my, and so at so the migrant is what a migrant share or is it? No, uh, you have like, know. so you have, for example, for every county, then two lines, right? One is for the migrant and one for the non-migrant. So you know what I mean? Okay, okay, now yeah. I get it. So you have two averages. You have average wage yes. for native, average wage for migrants, and then by skill groups. Correct. Okay, I see. But these are daily wages. So these are the these are the increases for the daily wage for the cumulative daily wages across the whole period. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think that maybe we can come back to this discussion later. You have uh, five minutes now. Oh, please. oh, okay. This is not a lot of time. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, there's also the the very then more exposed sectors and less exposed sectors, and then um, we we distinguish again between them and uh, look at everything I've shown you before. Um, and find some diverging uh, results. So for example, so given the time, I will just pick some examples. Um, so you see an increase in the cumulative immigrant inflow in the less exposed sectors, but not most exposed sectors. But at the same time, you see an increase in the migrant share of uh, both the most and less exposed sectors. And what this could mean is that migrants that already reside in Germany switch from the less to most exposed sectors and uh, that firms then cover these emerging vacant positions by uh, recruit re recruitments uh, from abroad. Um, and then in terms of wages, you see that in the most exposed uh, sectors, you see wage increases for all natives, but only for middle skilled migrants. So this would speak for productivity effects. And uh, for the less exposed sectors, you see wage increases for all natives, but not for, the, for migrants. And this applies to all skill groups. And when looking a bit at the at the me mechanisms, uh, we look at, for example, 
to shed some light on what I said before, all these possible reasons that could be driving these results as for example, having less access to relevant information on how to adapt your skill set or also maybe uh, switch how to switch uh, jobs and so on. We look uh, at the probability to switch sectors, which you can see here. Um, and we also look, uh, for example, we look at if um, migrants and natives as a response to uh, technological change switch more into communication intensive tasks. Um, uh, communication, communication intensive tasks, meaning, for example, um, human resources and all these kind of uh, tasks. And what we find here is uh, that AI increases uh, the native's uh, probability to work on communication intensive tasks. And it also increases it for the medium and low skilled. And this could mean that as you, as on the, on the like pre-AI, pre um, migrants are much less likely to work in these communication intensive tasks. AI could make it easier for them to, to work in these tasks as for example, recruiting softwares are available and they just maybe have to manage these recruiting softwares or uh, for example, certain translation softwares are available which makes, them, makes it also easier for them. And uh, concluding, what the paper shows is that overall industrial robots and AI, AI increase the overall, overall wage of natives, but decreases it for migrants. And this means that uh, policymakers should pay special attention to the migrant population when designing mitigation policies uh, in response to technological change. This would be desirable when thinking about inequalities or also discrimination between migrants and natives. And also countries should make sure that migrants have equal access to labor market institutions and relevant information about technological change and the required skills um, in order to avoid these inequalities and discriminatory effects. And lastly, what the paper also shows is that you cannot generalize the impact of technological change and that we need a differentiated perspective when talking about it and when analyzing its labor market impacts. So yeah, thank you very much. The bibliography is maybe not so interesting. So yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Britain. Perfect Thank timing. You. Very nice presentation. So now I would like to invite everyone to join the, the discussion. Um, if you are as a participant, you can just raise your hand and I can allow you to speak. Um, there's a question here from Morgan. Maybe uh, maybe Morgan, I can I can unmute you so you can interact directly. Sorry. Um, yeah, so Morgan, if you want, you can use the microphone now. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Brita, for your presentation. I was wondering about your results, uh, the effect of the dis what seems to be a displacement effect of AI against uh, high skilled immigrants. I was wondering was what you what's the explanation you have to this because it seems to be it seems yeah to be the opposite of what fine Asimoglu and Restrepo in their paper on uh, uh, what is a complement what they find is a complementary effect between AI and uh, high skilled employment and you in your case you find uh, the opposite in the case of immigrants so do you have an explanation for this? Um, yeah, so what I think could be an explanation, as I already said, and in, in the case of robots, but I think it could also apply to the to the case of AI is, so you know, these automation technologies, they of course replace certain tasks, right, and um, maybe it somehow impacts uh, migrants more due to the fact that they have less access to certain information or less access to networks. Uh, so they are more negatively impacted by this deep displacement of certain tasks. So that would be uh, my first hypothesis. Um, I think, yeah, I would need to find a possibility to, to test this further. Um, this is not part of the paper yet. I think this would be something to look at in the mechanism section or something like this. 
Um, but yeah, in general, I think all these papers, they always find diverging results for, for, um, for different countries, right? So, so for example, if you take the case, all this literature on robots, um, the results for the US are different as the re from the results found in Germany or France and so on. So, so yeah, this might have to do also maybe with local labor market institutions and so on, um, or the state of the current economy. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Just can I add, how do you measure high skill? Is it uh, from education or from uh, occupation? It's from um, uh, from education, actually. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is another question from Jacek. Jacek, go on. Hi. Uh, hello. So first of all, very nice uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, it's more a suggestion than question. Because uh, in this topic, what would be interesting to look is the fact that uh, German migration policy is very specific in the sense that immigrants who are from non-European non Union countries to get a work permit, a part of those who came as a family reunion, usually they need to be high skilled. So in the sense that they need to be able to earn above some threshold, which means that this non-EU country migration is, uh, is strongly selected. So in the sense that then they should, among them, there should be a positive correlation between amount of this, uh, this AI jobs and, uh, and, and uh, them, the inflow of immigrants. So I think that that would be interesting to, to maybe explore because maybe the opposite effect, effect is coming uh, from the migration from the European Union countries. So, so yeah, that's, that was my comment. Thank you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Actually, I tried to look at this. So I tried to do a heterogeneity analysis for EU versus non-EU migrants and migrants from different countries to see if it differs. But then I'm again, so I'm already mentioning it because it's, a, it's such a big limitation, this, this um, yeah, sample size. So I, I cannot do it because then again, I run into sample size problems, but it would be super interesting to see if it somehow differs by nationality, yeah. Thank you, Brita. Uh, Sarah has another question. Yeah, so I think it's a little bit along the same uh, line to what uh, Jacek was, uh, was asking, but it's more generally in terms of the composition, since you see there is an employment effect that some migrants disappear. I'm wondering how much of the wage effect is actually driven by changing the composition versus a change in wages of workers that were already there. So to controlling for compositional changes. And so one idea, one way you could do that is to fix the composition at the baseline and see if you just change the weights, uh, but fixing the composition, how much of the effect on wages you can explain. And so then you can interpret all of the difference as uh, the effect coming from, from changes regardless of the composition. Ah, yeah, that's a very good idea. Thank you. Okay, so I, I have another question. I think that the data that you have from AI, it kind of coincides also with the this so-called refugee crisis that was uh, quite important in Germany, right? Like 2014, 2015 crisis. So I don't know, like if you are, if you see this as a concern, or if there might be a chance in which you run some regressions where you check that you are not measuring somehow that shock, because I understand that also distribution keys dependent on how big where is the population in each county. I don't know if this can somehow be related to uh, which um, sectors are expanding into more AI, um, uh, let's say occupations or not. So maybe to see whether you can disentangle these two effects or like make sure that this is not uh, what you are um, gathering, let's say. Yeah, so we try to do this via restricting the, for example, immigrant inflow to only the ones who are immediately employed. Because the ZEAP also shows, for example, if you are a benefit recipient, uh, that you are also in the ZEAP. 
but yeah, of course, um, refugees in Germany can work, can be integrated into the labor market quite, quite quickly. Um, so still it could be there, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult. I think this was like the only thing that was possible with the sample size again, <laughs> because it would be very easy, of course, to, to control for this via the nationalities, right? That would be super easy because you can actually see the, the nationalities. So yeah. you take them out. But then, yeah, it's always with the sample size. It's, it's a big problem. Yeah, because, yeah, as I said, it's too, only like 2 million people, but then the migrants are only 10% of them. And then you go down, down to net three, which are 400 um units so yeah you, you get to your limits quite quite quickly i see yeah because i can also think about running you know like independent regressions where you just check that there's not a strong correlation for instance on mm -hmm. where these migrants are choosing to locate versus what are the regions that are more exposed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know if, if that makes sense uh to you yeah or maybe i could maybe like at a more aggregate level, look at it. Um, maybe not nuts three, but nuts two or something like this. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I don't know. Let me see if there's another question for the participants. Uh, okay, so uh, wait, there is a question from Josep. Go ahead. Yeah, in the meantime, I'd like to ask a question. If uh, uh, I, I missed uh, the, the results were, I think, a bit fast. Uh, the employment effects on the natives, uh, on the high skilled natives, uh, and you know, if we can make a recap on that, and also if you have uh, some some figures on the distribution of natives and immigrants across. The, the skill categories so that you know to also get an idea of uh, uh, the, of the of the composition effect yeah i think i have this uh, somewhere in the in the annex um but yeah it's it's good to include it maybe next time in the presentation the composition um by a skill group and so for the employment, your question is uh, the effect on on natives on the unemployment or or on on what exactly? Well, yeah, on yeah, on the unemployment. You you had the displacement yeah, AI effects on, on unemployment. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. So in the case of um, AI, we see that it decreases the unemployment rate of the natives. So this would speak for complementarity effects, right? And it's also in line with what you see that the, the wages also increase. So there seem to be a positive effects on, on the natives by AI, but um, not for the migrants. So yeah, these are these adverse effects, these overall adverse effects. All right, thanks. You are muted, Ma Maria. Thank you. <laughs> um, so there's another question from Vicente. Vicente, if you agree, I can uh, I'll unmute you now so you can ask it uh, yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, very nice presentation and paper. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to ask you about the, uh, I mean, how you define a migrant. So if, if you have someone living there for 40 years, uh, well, maybe it's foreign born and it's an immigrant but it's not the same as someone just arrived from spain from poland from turkey i don't know so um for me there is an issue which is uh, population going to a place because of a uh, new service firm with uh, robots or just being exposed from there because of robots i don't know uh, but uh and th there are two different types of population flows so just arrived people which uh, which are fully immigrants, which while well, the other is just flows within Germany, which I guess is the more the higher source of variability in the immigration of, uh, data. And um, well, German people move too, even though they are less mobile than foreign people, um, they are many more. So I don't know 
what's the role of every test? I, I, so I, I just sold the, the variable for immigrants, I guess foreign immigrants, but what about German immigrants? Thank you. Yeah, that's a good point that was also raised already before in, in some presentation with the internal migration that could uh, be a confounding factor. So for now, in the mechanism section, I, I look at if um, AI and robots somehow impact the probability to move internally in Germany. And in the case of robots, I do not find any significant effects, but in the case of AI, I find significant effects um, for, for the, the natives, not the migrants. Um, so yeah, it's uh, definitely something on the to-do list to somehow control for this. I haven't come up with a good idea of how to do this, but uh, it, ideally I would somehow control for internal migration. Um, and as we, so how we define it is uh, through the nationality. So um, the Z app uh, details the nationality. And as soon as somebody has a non-German um, nationality, uh, the person we take as a migrant. But then of course the Z app automatically changes the nationality as soon as the person um, receives the German nationality. So then the person is not, detailed anymore as as uh, as a migrant so it it follows the nationality 